Now let's look at the content delivery and dissemination mechanisms. We'll see how we can make the delivery of content from the CDN to the end user more dynamic, scalable, and efficient. We are going to look at some replication techniques that we shall consider in this module. Since we know that CDNs are uh, global, um, we can think about a very large scale transcontinental network uh, connected, uh, connecting various data centers. Uh, so it's a very complex situation. Uh, we can expect some kind of uh, connectivity failures, intermi intermittent connectivity, or even hardware failures. In that case, the original content, which is hosted by the original uh, web server, is not replicated at the um, caching sites or the uh, remote site. Therefore, a requirement comes up that a CDN is going to work best when the connectivity is intact, the content is replicated to the uh, remote sites uh, so that the users are able to access the content locally. So pushing the content towards the users is a desired goal for CDN. This not only helps the overall quality of service parameters, um, in terms of user experiencing some performance, but it also increases the availability of content in the wake of failure. This necessitates that some kind of algorithms and mechanisms be devised, uh, which deal with the replication of data and the dissemination of data through some tree-like structure. We can think about the creation of replica uh, in a content delivery network at two levels. Um, in the first level or tier, we have a small group of uh, um, servers which are very consistently updating the content from the original server. Uh, we can think about it as a Byzantine inner ring. It's a security terminology which can be replicated onto the storage system. So the original content from web server or streaming media providers can be replicated onto this ring. Then we have an outwardly growing large network, which is more of a uh, uh, soft state based uh, second tier. Soft state basically means it's a timer based content uh, management mechanism. So what happens is once we have a timer based mechanism, it means that the content in the outer circle or outer tier is going to be um, a replica which is temporarily stored on the uh, outer circle. So the CDNs, uh, the file um, system caches, uh, proxy caches all fall into this category. So if that's the desired uh, view we would like to develop for uh, um, content uh, distribution through replication and caching, uh, what are the possible challenges we foresee? The first one is that uh, whatever the um, logical abstraction of inner and outer circles or tiers may be, on the uh, physical implementation, uh, we must think about some kind of uh, a tree-like structure where the replicas are um, sent out in a multicast manner because uh, having a broadcast storm or a unicast transmission uh, for replication does not make much sense. So this multicast tree is going to behave like a dissemination mechanism uh, which will make a tree. This tree is essentially limited by the uh, total branching or the total connectivity that could be realized uh, in this uh, uh, arrangement. The, 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 the second tier application is aimed to provide content in close proximity to the users. So it is ex expected that the quality of service overall is going to increase. Uh, at the same time, the um, uh, network considerations and the cost issues 
like uh, uh, resource consumption of the underlying infrastructure and the communication overhead shall also be optimally realized. Uh, the uh, book which I am referring to is again from CDN Rajkumar Bhaiya. Uh, there it mentions of uh, an algorithm uh, proposed by one of the uh, contributing group. Uh, it is called SCAN, Scalable Content Access Network. Here again, the uh, physical nodes are categorized as uh, servers, clients, and these are placed in uh, um, the, the, the servers are placed within the ISP data centers. Uh, the, these servers actually have the replica of the original data which whichever was stored at the origin server. Uh, in order to have consistent view, uh, these servers must have an interactive update mechanism uh, that they call as distributed routing and location system. Uh, so this helps locate the nearby replicas for the clients uh, without having to go through the global communication. The architecture of scan system uh, can be thought of at the data plane and uh, more at the physical level. At the data plane, we have the origin data source represented by the square with thick black line. Then we have the replica which is represented by a square with thin dotted uh, line. The cache is represented by an ellipse uh, and then they have a relationship. Thin arrow actually refers to uh, always update and then the thick arrow refers to uh, adaptive coherence. So these two are basically rigid update and uh, need driven update. So various representations and relationships are shown between the, the replica and the cache. So this is the, uh, the data plane or the more logical or abstract plane. On the network, these are represented by, by root servers, servers and the uh, clients. And the relationship is described through the uh, dynamic location and uh, uh, discovery mechanism. Uh, the protocol that we have just uh, described through mesh. They call it a tapestry mesh. With that in view, let's look at how the internet content delivery systems vary in terms of performance and uh, certain other properties. The classification that can be thought of as we can have a web-based caching in which the client initiates the request or the server actually initiates the request. There is uncooperative, that is no coherence, no coordination between uh, the servers, uh, the caches and the replicas. It is called uncooperative, pull-based content delivery networks. Then we have push-based content delivery networks, which are cooperative. Now these different options are compared against a couple of properties. For instance, uh, what is the cache replica sharing mechanism for efficient uh, replication? It is obvious that sometimes it is cooperative, sometimes it is not cooperative. Then how much support is there for increasing size of the network for request redirection? That is when a request is made, would that request be redirected to another replicated server or a cached uh, server? So these are different options which are available. For instance, you can see that in server initiated, uh, we have a bloom filter based mechanism to exchange the replica locations. Then we have uh, the detailing of replication which could be achieved. Uh, that is called granularity on the basis of URL or URI. Uh, and then on the basis of a website also. Uh, then uh, is there a provision for load balancing? Uh, is the are the replica replicas coherent with each other and the is is there a network monitoring mechanism for fault tolerance for uh, these different options available now this entire table summarizes uh, the options that we have and we can take a blend of either of these 
the reference book is again by raj kumar bhaiya content delivery networks published by uh, springer science and business media lecture notes in electrical engineering